There lived a man named Robert in a village called Vermont. He did some or the other work the whole day. He was interested in doing new experiments. His father and mother lived in his house. He lived very happily with them. Whatever stuff he saw, he thought about it that how it could be used in our daily lives. He kept thinking these kind of things and he worked keeping that in mind. One day Robert made a machine to make dough with flour for his mother that was made out of a tin. Hey son, what have you made? What will I do with it? Hey mom, this is a machine for making dough with flour. This will not make your arms ache and your work will be completed faster. Will it really work? Yes mom, this will work for sure. Look, I'll show you. After saying this, Robert made dough out of flour from that machine and showed his mother and his mother was very happy seeing the dough. He invented something or the other always and this helped the villagers often. The villagers were very happy with Robert because of this. They praised whatever he made. One day, Robert made a scooter petrol pump for a worker in the field. And since sometimes there was electricity failure in the village, he built solar plant in house and produced electricity for the village. He did many such kind of work. But there was a big problem in the village that there were no tractors in the village. There was only one tractor and that was of his friend James. He was a proud person and so no one went to ask help from him. One day, a village worker told Robert, Brother, you invent so many things often. Why not make a tractor for us? We cannot afford to buy a tractor and in future, when would be able to use tractor, that is not certain. That's why I want that you build the tractor. Uncle, you are right. But for that, I'll need a lot of money. Son, only you can make a tractor for poor people like us. Uncle, if you have faith in me, then I'll definitely try out at least once. You don't worry, I'll do my best. That's like my boy. Okay, now I'll take your leave. I have to go to work. Sure, uncle. Saying this, the worker went away. And when he was gone, Robert started thinking. While thinking about it, he saw the big woods kept there. If I create a tractor with wood, it will cost me less and it will be a help for the villagers. Thinking this, he started cutting the wood and he cut long and identical sheets from it. Now, an idea came into his mind. If I visit James' house and make some images of his tractor, it will be a great help. Otherwise, I can click pictures with my mobile. My work will be done. Thinking this, Robert went near James' farm and there he clicked some photos of James' tractor with his mobile. Then James came and said, What are you doing? Why are you taking pictures of my tractor? Actually, I have to make a tractor for the villagers. That's why I am taking pictures. I am not doing anything to your tractor. Okay, I thought you are trying to steal something. Oh no, James. Why will I steal your tractor? I just wanted a few pictures which I took. Okay. Hey, Robert. Being your classmate, I would like to give you an advice. What advice do you want to give? I think you should pay attention to your career. It is better if you do not do these frivolous work. I will see what I need to do. I cannot be selfish like you. I will serve people throughout my life. Yeah, serve people throughout your life. The era of good suggestions is gone. Saying this, James went away angrily and Robert also went after he completed his work. After coming back home, he planned and made a map for tractor made of wood. According to the map, he made small parts of the tractor as fast as he could and one day he made a big tractor after assembling them. Now engine had to be fit in it. Then he took out the engine of an auto and fit it in there. He installed the steering and the tractor was ready. The tractor was very good looking. He took plenty of its photos and drove it into the village. Seeing the tractor, the villagers were very happy and they started running after it. Children climbed the tractor. James saw this and he told Robert, Hey Robert, what the hell have you made? My tractor is better than this. It will never break. 
this wood will break very quickly. It's okay. If this will break, I will put another one. No big deal. Hearing such an answer, James went from there angrily. Robert took his tractor and drove through the village daily with children mounted on it. He helped the villagers. He was using the tractor in the right manner. Because of this, the villagers were very happy with him. One day, there was flood in his village. People's stuff was wet in the water. There was no place for people to live. Then Robert took people on his tractor and left them in a safe place so that no one's life was in danger. When he came near James' house, James was standing on the roof with his wife and child and they were crying for help. James, come and sit on my tractor and take sister-in-law too. James had tears in his eyes. Hey friend, I always took you wrong. I'm really very sorry. Hey, what's there to be sorry? We are good friends and will remain that. Yeah, that's true. Saying this, they both hug each other and Robert took them to a safe place out of the village. And everyone now started praising Robert. When the flood relaxed, the district collector honoured Robert on his presence of mind. This story teaches us that we should always do good deeds. We should never think bad of anyone. There lived a woman named Linda in a town called Winslow. She worked hard and earned her living as a labourer. Her daughter was Sandra. Sandra was intelligent but was a little lazy. But after her father's death, Linda did not say anything to her and so, taking advantage of this, she showed laziness in doing any work. One day... Hey Sandra, get up fast. You are getting late for school. What's this, Ma? You always keep saying something. Let me sleep for some more time. If you are late for school, it will not be good for you. Sandra woke up and after getting ready, she went to school. She felt asleep even in school. She started daydreaming because of which she did not pay attention in school. One day, her school teacher calls Linda to school. Your child does not pay attention to her studies. You need to take care of that. Yeah, I go out for work and so she doesn't listen to me. You will have to help her get rid of laziness. Okay, I will try. Saying this, Linda leaves. She was very worried about Sandra. She always thought of her but she couldn't find a way out. Few days passed and one day, while having those thoughts in mind, Linda goes to a temple and prays to God. Dear God, please give wisdom to my daughter and help her get rid of her laziness. I won't ask you for more. Saying this, Linda leaves the temple and goes to her workplace. Linda stitched clothes at a tailor's shop. When she couldn't finish the work, she brought it home as well. Many days passed like this. One day, Sandra had a terrible dream. In her dream, she goes to a place where there were flowers of different colors and there were lots of fruits and cake to eat. She was happy seeing all this. Wow! This place is so nice. I will stay here. I do not have to worry about food. And here, no one will come to wake me up as well. She loved cake and so she went to eat the cake first. But as soon as she touched it, it vanished. She started walking and saw a hut. She goes near it. What's happening with me? As soon as I touch anything, it vanishes. How is this possible? Saying this, she went near to that hut and saw that an old lady was talking to herself. We never get anything without doing some work. It is wrong to eat without doing any work. Sandra heard this and asked that old lady. Grandmother, why can't I eat the food over here? There is a rule here. No one gets anything without labor. If you don't want to work, you can go to another town. You will get whatever you want to eat there. If you want to stay here, you will have to work and then get food. And you will also have to learn something new. So, what do you want? You want to live here or go to another town? Speak first. I don't want to stay here. I want to go to that town where I won't have to do any kind of work and I can eat the whole day. Saying this, Sandra leaves that place and goes to another town. There also she finds an old lady whose name was Nancy. 
Hey, come dear. How did you come here? Please come and sit here and have some food. Thank you. I won't have to work instead of this, isn't it? No. You won't have to do any work. You can play after having food. Thank you. Saying this, Sandra went to the garden and plucked many things to eat, but she was not willing to stop. She saw there were cakes and pastries there. She started eating them too. After eating a lot of food, she felt sleepy and then In our town no one sleeps. We only eat and have fun. We don't do any work. I'm very sleepy. Please let me sleep. Now you have come here and so you can stay here and enjoy. Got it? I want to go home to my mother. Saying this she started crying and in her dream she started running. While she was running, she saw a beautiful angel on the way. Angel told Sandra, "Come Sandra, how were the two towns? You must be happy now that you will not have to work now." I don't like this life. I want to live my life fully and that too with my mother. Okay, then you don't want to live here? No, dear angel, I don't want to live here. Fine, but you will have to agree on one thing. What is it? Now, you will have to wake up on time, do your work on your own and pay attention to your studies too. I agree to all this. Can I go from here? Yeah. Now you can go. You know Sandra, you are going to take a good lesson from this world of lessons. Yes, I understood. Can I go now? Yes, you can go now. And then Sandra comes out of her dream. Today onwards I will do all my work on my own and not give trouble to anyone. Now her behavior changed. Now she did not waste time in doing her work. She started to live like a good girl. Her mother was also very happy seeing this change. Now Sandra fetched good marks in school. And all this happened because of that world of lessons. This story teaches us that we should never be lazy in life. We should do our work on our own. There lived a man named James in a village Muratok. He used to work in others' fields to earn his living. His wife Stella and his son Robert lived in his family. They were poor but very happy in their life. They used to work hard to earn. Hey Stella, please serve the food fast. I have to go to work early tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Just five minutes more. After a while, Stella serves the meal and everyone sleeps after eating. Hey, why do you have to go early tomorrow? Dear, tomorrow there is lot of work to do on the field, so I'll go there early. Okay. Now stop talking and go to sleep. Hmm. <laughs> the next day, James got to the field before sunrise and starts working. Working, it got evening and dark. James was about to leave the field when he suddenly stepped on a snake and the snake bit James. James started shouting loudly. Since it was evening, everyone was indoors after getting back from their fields and so nobody could hear James shouting. After some time, James fell unconscious. Next day, few people came to the field and they saw James lying unconscious in the field. Let's go and check. Villagers go near James. Hey James bro get up what happened to you but James didn't get up then one man looks at his feet James bro was bitten by a snake see the marks on the foot everyone takes James to his home oh what happened to my husband why did you all bring him in this way then one man tells the fact to Stella listening to all this Stella felt the ground slipping under her feet Oh my god. What did you do? What will I do now? How will I feed my family? Stella started crying. Now the house responsibility was completely on Stella. Now Stella started working in the fields and earned her living. Few years passed. Now Robert started to go to school. Ma, please give me my tiffin fast. I am getting late to school. Yes, my son. I am bringing it. Stella brings the tiffin and hands it to Robert. Time passed. Robert started to go to college. He never felt sorry for his mother's condition and he had become irresponsible. Hey friends, 
Why not we go for a picnic tomorrow? Yeah, sure. We will have lots of fun. Saying this, all his friends go home, and Robert sits there thinking. I have agreed to go to the picnic, but from where I'll get the money? Robert, immersed in this thought, comes home and tells his mother, "Ma, I need five thousand rupees tomorrow." Hey, son, why do you need so much money? And I don't have that much money, son. Ma, I don't know anything. You do anything, but give me money till evening. Otherwise, I will not come home. Hey, son, don't do this. I really don't have that much money with me. Ma, do anything. I want the money at any cost. Okay, my son, I will do something. Stella gets worried on how to get so much money. She goes to the owner of her field and asks for half of the money as loan. But even then, there was shortage of money. Now Stella goes to her neighbor and asks for some loan. And anyhow, she gathers five thousand rupees. Ma, give me the money fast. Yes, my dear son, I will give it to you right now. Stella gives the money to Robert. Both of them go to sleep after having dinner. The other day, Robert leaves with his friends for picnic. Son, be careful and keep your money safe. Yes, ma. I'm not a small kid now. Robert leaves home and all the friends catch the bus to go to picnic. Robert looks at a girl in the bus and he likes her. Robert starts talking to her. Hi, I'm Robert. What's your name? I'm Grace. After talking to her, he starts loving her. But Grace was a very angry girl. After getting back from picnic, Robert brings Grace his home. Ma, see who is with me. Who is she, son? Stella looks at Grace, but Grace was looking at her angrily. After staying for a while, Grace leaves their house. Ma, did you like Grace? I'm going to marry her. Son. I do not think this girl is good for you. You will find a far better one. You don't teach me. If I ever get married, it will be with Grace. Okay, son, as you wish. You have to spend your life with her. If both of you stay happy, why would anything bother me? After a few days, Robert and Grace got married. One day, Grace started arguing with her mother-in-law. I will not do any work. If you want to do, you can do. Otherwise, leave it. Oh dear! But when I will not be here, you will have to do everything. I will see then. Don't try to teach me. In the evening, when Robert comes home, hey, look! Your mother doesn't work at all and makes me to do everything and argues with me on the top of that. Robert goes and abuses his mother. Grace becomes happy after seeing all this. Now this became routine. Grace used to provoke Robert against his mother, keeping Robert away from his mother. One day she burnt her hand by herself, and in the evening, when Robert came home, "Hey, see what your mother did today! I refused to work, and so your mother burnt my hand." After listening to Grace, Robert got very angry. He threw his mother out of the house. "Son, what have I done that you are throwing me out of the house?" Where will I go at this age? Think about your old mother, please. Don't do this, son. Stop crying and get out of my house. Poor Stella takes her stuff and leaves the house. She starts living in a temple nearby. Time passes by. One day, suddenly Robert feels pain in his heart. Hey, Grace, I'm having a pain in my heart. Please take me to the hospital. Grace takes Robert to the hospital. Doctors check Robert and tell Grace. Look, madam, there is a hole in your husband's heart. We will have to find a person by tomorrow who would be ready to give his heart to him. Otherwise, we will not be able to save your husband. Hearing this from the doctor, Grace gets terrified. She doesn't understand what to do. Robert's neighbor finds this out, and she tells this to Robert's mother. As soon as Robert's mother comes to know this. She comes to the hospital immediately and talks to the doctor. Doctor, please save my child. You can take my heart, but please save my son's life. Stella gives her heart to her son and says goodbye to this world for her son. Robert's operation was successful. The other day when Robert gains consciousness, he asks Grace, "Hey Grace, what happened to me?" Before Grace could say anything, doctors come there. Robert, 
Your operation has been quite successful. You need not to worry at all. But doctor, what had happened to me? You had a hole in your heart. Your mother gave her life to save yours. Hearing this, Robert and Grace had tears in their eyes. Robert started crying. What? <laughs> My mother gave me her heart. Yes, Robert. Your mother gave her heart to you, and now she is no more. After listening to the doctor, Robert was dumbfounded. Grace also feels ashamed of what she did. Right then, Robert puts his hand on his heart, and he heard a voice. My son. I did everything for you but you never cared for me but son I told you I will never let you fall short of anything that's it I kept my promise you stay happy my son listening to this robert started crying but there was no use being restless robert's life was saved but his mother was not with him anymore friends a mother can do anything for her children There is no one greater than a mother in this world. Those who are fortunate to have the love of both mother and father, they are the richest and fortunate people in the world. Always respect your mother and father. You idiot! Does it take so long to fetch water? There are clothes to wash, utensils to clean. Who is going to do that? <laughs> I will do it right away, mom. Don't you dare call me mom. You killed your own mother during birth, and now you wish to kill me too. Oh, Stacy dear, you got up early. Are you not feeling well? <sighs> yes, mom. I'm just feeling hungry. Give me something to eat. Oh my god. See? My darling is hungry. and the switch has not even cooked food yet now are you going to stare at me or will you cook food now uh, i will cook right away mom mom today i wish like eating fish oh yes dear today for you we will cook fish hey anna did you hear that my daughter wants to eat fish today go and catch some fresh fish from the river hmm? uh, yes i'm going Today I am unable to find a single fish. What shall I do? Mom, I miss you a lot. Why did you leave me? Am I so bad? Speak up, mom. Oh. Oh, my ring. This is my mother's only thing left. Give me back my ring. What kind of tunnel is this? Huh? What place is this? Help! Help! My children! There's fire! Fire! Someone save my children! They will die! Help! My children! My little children! They are trapped in fire! Somebody save them! Please save them, dear. Can you save them? Please help me. Don't worry, oh bird. I'll rescue them. I am very grateful to you, dear. You may proceed on this road ahead. of this river drying up oh so you are here that ring is my mother's last thing i have give it to me back right now you catch us and kill us every day you are very bad i will not give you the ring back i'm helpless i have to do that because my stepmother asked me to do that okay i will give you the ring back but you will have to do something for that there lives a witch on that hill She is drying up the water of this river with her black magic. If this continues, 
This river will dry up soon and we will be killed. You will have to stop the witch somehow and end this black magic. Okay, I will do that for you. But you will have to promise me one thing. If I succeed in stopping that witch, you will give me back my ring. Deal? Yes, of course. I promise you. Hmm, <laughs> once all the water of this river dries up, I will eat the fish out there. Then I will not have to catch fish. <laughs> huh? You should go away from here. This witch is wicked. She has trapped me in this cage. She will catch you too. Go away. Go away. Huh? Run away. I've opened your cage. No, no. I'm afraid to go out. The witch will catch me again. I will stay here itself. Well then, in that case, I will have to save you from the witch. Huh? Who are you? What are you doing here? You should stop your black magic now. This is drying up the river and all the fishes are dying. Please don't do this. <laughs> Interesting. I will eat all the fish out there. I am tired of catching the fish and that is why I am drying up the river. You should not do this. Don't do this. Oh, who are you to stop me? Now I will turn you into a fish and eat you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I will bring some spices from the market. Then I will cook you and eat up. <laughs> Listen, parrot, I need your help. If you don't show courage today, then we will not be able to get rid of the switch forever. You are a very brave and good girl. I will help you. Take this. Keep this magic wand with you. With its help you can teach a good lesson to the witch. Who brought you back to original? That he will tell you. You catch people and imprison them. Now we will make you pay for this. Why are you doing this? I only wanted to eat fish. You were getting fish as per your need. But you are greedy and wanted to eat all of them. There is a big difference between greed and need. You are harming others for your greed and benefit. Forgive me, I was blinded by greed. You are right, I should take things as per my need. Forgive me, I will stop my black magic and I will not kill any fish from today. You open my eyes, dear. Thank you so much, Anna. You are really very sweet and good child. You saved us all. Even the nest of that bird and this parrot also. Huh? But how do you know this? <laughs> I know everything. I was just testing you. Now I want you to give something, after which you will never have to catch fish again. So much of gold? Yes, because you deserve this. Because your heart is more valuable than this gold. And here, take your mother's ring. <laughs> Thank you. I will be grateful to you forever. 
थैंक यू सो मच वॉट इज दिस हाँ सो मच गोल्ड वेर डिड यू गेट दिस wow then we too will also go and bring lots of gold and till then you must keep food ready wow this is really a very nice place now we will take lots of gold from here please help me save my children save my nest are you out of your mind Why should we risk our lives to save your nest? And what if something happens to us? Come on, mom, let's go fast. We have come here to get gold. This seems to be the same fish. Come, let's ask for gold. Hey you, fish, were you the one who gave gold to my Anna? Are you her mother? Yes, I am her mother. Now give us that gold too. Yes, I'll give it now. Oh, how did this happen? How did we become frogs? That is because both of you are lazy, slothful, and greedy. You are Anna's stepmother. Both of you have treated her very badly. This is a punishment for that. No, no. Please forgive us. We will never treat her badly now. And we don't even need gold. Please make us as before. We will fix our mistakes. Now go and live happily together. This is for your own benefit. Please forgive us, dear. We have hurt you a lot. We are ashamed of our deeds. Please forgive us. Oh, mother. <laughs> <laughs> 